Oh, Anka, you'll never guess what huge Seattle cliche I'm in right now. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the big time guest stars that we didn't remember had appearances on the sitcom Frasier. I hope that answers your question, Warren. It's a feature of XP, very quick, very smooth. Hey, this is fun. Number 10, Jane Lynch. For some, Jane Lynch was a new face when she showed up as cheerleading coach Sue Sylvester on Glee in 2009. And maybe that's your problem. Bigotry is no laughing matter. And that's how Sue sees it. Outstanding. But Lynch had been acting on the small and big screen for two decades already, appearing in a large number of television shows, including an episode of Frasier in 1996. Well, <laughs> this is nice. Yes, it is. I'll, I'll get, get it. it. <laughs> In the season four episode, A Lilith Thanksgiving, Lynch plays Cynthia, a pretentious uptight mother whose son attends the private school Frasier and Lilith are desperately trying to get Frederick into. She might not be as badass as Sylvester, but Cynthia does still like to tell it like she sees it. Now, now, Barkley is a very charming little school. Little school? No, don't be so sensitive. <laughs> Damn your condescension. Damn your jealousy! Don't talk to my wife that way! Number 9. Dan Castellaneta Although Dan Castellaneta is on one of the longest-running and most popular television shows of all time, it's still easy to miss him when he makes guest appearances on other shows, because, well, he isn't actually yellow with a few strands of hair and four fingers. Lisa, stop the racket. I'm trying to fix your mother's camera. How oh, easy. Easy. Hmm. I'm gonna need a bigger drill. But while he spent over 30 years as the voice of Homer Simpson, Castellaneta has done some live action acting as well. Like when he played a patient on Frasier in an episode that had Dr. Crane considering seeing patients in person again. I'm Brad Kincaid. That's not my real name. <laughs> I'll just get it off your insurance form, huh? <laughs> and he wasn't Frasier's only famous patient that episode. The hilarious Sarah Silverman also sat on the couch across from the good doctor in that one. She called me m'lady and I called her m'lady. And... <laughs> Number 8. Lori Metcalf I don't know who. Is it you? peek a -boo. Give a clue. peek a -boo. Guess I better go and sneak a peek a boo peek a -boo. <laughs> Actress Lori Metcalf played Fraser Crane's first wife, Nanette Guzman, in the show's final season. However, if this was a list of stars you forgot were on Shears, then we would actually be talking about Emma Thompson as Guzman, as it was she who played the character on that show in 1992. Today it's two today. Freddy's turning two today. Hooty hooty hoodly hoodly hoot today. But for whatever reason, when Guzman's character was brought back for the spinoff in 2004, Thompson didn't return to reprise her role. And so, that's when Metcalf, best known at the time for playing Jackie on Roseanne, became Nanny G. If you knew how bored I am being Nanny G, <laughs> how trapped I feel. You have a wonderful career. But nothing ever changes. Do you have any idea what it's like to play the same character for 20 years? <laughs> Number 7. Jennifer Coolidge. Well, that's human nature, Dr. Crane. People neglect their exercising for many reasons. So holidays, travel, illness, lack of time, death. <laughs> From Phoebe and Monica's ex-roommate who's now living in England on Friends to a Polish businesswoman on Two Broke Girls, comedic actress Jennifer Coolidge has played many different characters and had many different accents throughout her career. That's my boot. <laughs> Oh, it's lovely to meet you. What? <laughs> what the hell kind of accent is that? Including the time she played Frederica, a no-nonsense German physical therapist filling in for Daphne on a season eight episode of Frasier. Frederica is confident in what she does, and she sure doesn't take no for an answer. Now that we think of it, she's kind of like Stifler's mom, but different. The secret is exercise, hard work, then good food, and lots of it when you've earned it. Oh, well. <laughs> Number six, Rita Wilson. There have been studies showing that men are attracted to women who look like their mother. Mia looks exactly like our mother. Mrs. Crane, I've only seen photos, mine, but 
Now that you mention it, there is a resemblance. And even a great psychiatric mind like Fraser Crane wasn't immune to the psychological fact of human nature, as we saw in the season 7 premiere when he starts dating Mia Preston, a woman who looks exactly like his mother. Do you two see what I see? My God, they could be twins. No, Fraser, take it easy. God, you do see it. How could you miss it? This is a fact that everyone around him picks up on before he does. Rita Wilson plays Mia here. When Frazier's mother makes an appearance in season 9 as he's trying to figure out how come his relationships don't work out, Hester Crane is played by, of course, Rita Wilson. But it's completely understandable. I was your first love. Ladies, meet the competition. This is the woman against whom we have all been measured. Number 5. Zoe Deschanel. It's like a parody of itself. How so? Oh, you know, double-decker buses, oh. bobbies, little pubs. It's like Epcot, but even fakier. <laughs> so I bailed. It's very possible you remember the season 10 episode of Frasier entitled Kissing Cousin, in which Roz's younger cousin comes to visit, but don't remember that said cousin was played by Zoe Deschanel. Because not only was 2002 only about four years into Deschanel's acting career, but she also wasn't sporting the dark hair and bangs we've all come to associate with this talented actress. Listen, sweetie, why don't you go out by yourself tonight? Oh, come on, Maribel, have some fun. Don't do that. Do what, Maribel? Knock it off, I'm serious. However, she did still have the blonde locks the following year in the hit Christmas comedy Elf. How many of us remember she was in that movie? Better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Number four, Laura Linney. It can be a little embarrassing to admit you need help in the romance department. Please, come in. <laughs> no, this was a mistake. I understand. Come in. <laughs> Actress Laura Linney appeared in more episodes of the show than anyone else on our list, and played a significant role in the final season and series finale as well. Linney played Charlotte, a matchmaker who Frasier falls hard for, even after discovering that she had scammed him out of $10,000. And if you'll let me, I'm going to find someone fantastic for you too, Frasier, because you deserve it. And because you have my $10,000. <laughs> Are you going to mention well, that every I'm time you say that? Linny appeared in five episodes that final season, including one in which she and Frasier break up rather than pursue their relationship long distance. But as Frasier fans remember, the series ends with Frasier foregoing a television opportunity in San Francisco in order to go to Chicago in an attempt to make things work with Charlotte. Well, I just know I'd always regret it if I didn't take the chance. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chicago. For your safety, the captain is asking you. Wish me luck. Number three, Michael Keaton. Well, the truth is I've been in a terrible accident. I've lost all feeling from my waist down. The doctors tell me I'll be like this for the rest of my life. Oh, hi, everybody. Blaine Sternin. Yes, it's true. Batman was on an episode of Frasier. However, rather than playing a superhero on the show, Michael Keaton played Lilith's half-brother Blaine Sternin. He was an unscrupulous con artist who had conned Frasier in the past but appeared to have changed his ways following a car accident that left him using a wheelchair. Hey, you know, this is, uh, this is really going to help some needy people now that I know what the heck it is. <laughs> Appearances can be deceiving, though. Just as Bruce Wayne was able to keep his alter ego a secret from the folks in Gotham City, so too was Blaine eventually able to convince Frasier of his good intentions while successfully accomplishing his more nefarious goals. <laughs> Number two, Bill Gates. Ladies and gentlemen, let's please welcome Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. Yeah, sorry I was late. Oh, that's all I right. was just talking to an old friend. Yes. <laughs> According to his IMDb page, Bill Gates has only made three appearances on television shows. Silicon Valley, The Big Bang Theory, and his acting debut in 2001 on the 200th episode of Frasier. Gates played himself appearing as a guest on the Doctor's 2000th show ostensibly to congratulate him and do an interview. A fan of my show. Excuse me, Warren from Kirkland is on line two. Uh, yes, Ross, I, I won't be taking any calls until after Mr. Gates has left. Actually, it's for Mr. Gates. However, once he arrives, Frazier's audience bombards the station with calls for the Microsoft chairman. Within minutes, Frazier has been pushed aside and Gates has taken over the show, even using the doctor's I'm listening catchphrase to greet the callers. Who do we have next, Roz? We have Bob from Fremont. He has a question about his laptop. Go ahead, Bob. I'm listening. <laughs> 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Patrick Stewart it seems like every sitcom in the 90s and early 2000s had to have one episode in which a straight character is comically suspected of being gay. Do you want a date Saturday? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> he is cute. He's funny. He's, he's a he? Well, yeah. In the case of Frasier, that happened in season 11 when Frasier went to a gay bar to find out what the sexual orientation of Roz's boyfriend was. My furniture polisher. <laughs> Don't tell me you put away paste and shiny for life as a barkeep. I just do this on the side. Oh, well, but you're surprised to see me in here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this makes everyone believe Frasier himself is attracted to men, and leads to the doctor accepting the flirtations from an opera director. The latter is played by Patrick Stewart, and Frasier goes along with things for longer than he should because Alistair Burke has the in with the high society that the titular character so craves to be a part of. <laughs> sharpens the appetite, how it builds the intensity, the heat, the desire. Can you feel it? Oh yes, there it is. <laughs> Who was your favorite Frasier guest star? Put down your tossed salad and scrambled eggs and leave us a comment below. Look, Dr. Crane, the lines are hot. Really hot. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.